This is George Washington. He was born on the 22nd of February in 1732. He was the commander in chief during the American Civil War and the first president of the United States. But one thing you might not know about him is that he had a real pet peeve about swearing. It's true. He was once quoted as saying, the foolish and wicked practice of profane cursing and swearing is a vice so mean and so low that every person of sense and character detests and despises it. But whether you agree with George or not, we can all agree that swearing makes up a considerable amount of our vocabulary. 0.6% to be precise. And with the average person uttering approximately 16,000 words per day, that averages out to be about 95 fucks, shits, and goddamn it's every single day. In general, swear words are intended to offend. What am I a fucking retard man? Am I a fucking retard? Oh! But when looked at with a calm scientific demeanor, they can be really helpful. Swearing is universal. No matter where you come from, profanities are littered throughout your history. The interesting thing is, where you come from and the taboos of that region often dictate what swear words you tend to use. Take sex, for example. For English, we have fuck. In Italian, they have fanculo. And the Russians, well, they have yeah, but, but over in Germany, where they've always been much more relaxed about sex and nudity, they rarely use sexually themed curse words. They tend to keep things a lot more poop orientated. The most fascinating thing about swearing though, it actually has the power to alter your biology. The act of simply hearing a swear word will cause a quickening of your pulse, it'll make the hairs stand up on the back of your arm, and it'll make your breathing more shallow. Swearing also has the ability to reduce pain. In 2009, this guy, Richard Stevens from Keele University, performed a study on 67 unfortunate undergraduate students to see whether swearing would reduce, make worse, or have no effect whatsoever on someone's perception of pain. Ah. To determine this, he asked students to submerge their non-dominant hand into five degree water and keep it there for as long as they could. While doing this, students were asked to repeat their five favorite curse words. While repeating the control words, men were able to keep their hands submerged for 146 seconds, and the women were able to keep it under for about 83 seconds. However, when repeating their chosen profanities, both sexes were able to keep their hands submerged for an extra 40 seconds. Perhaps what's most fascinating about swearing though is that, as far as our brains are concerned, swear words aren't even words. To our brain, swear words are concentrated lumps of emotion. Swear words are stored in a completely different part of the brain from every other word we know. Formal language is stored in Broca's and Wernick's area of the brain. Swear words, on the other hand, are stored in the limbic system, a complex system of neural networks that control emotion. This could explain why neurological patients in the past, who have lost all speech and language function, are still able to curse, sometimes even in context, but are unable to form sentences. It might also explain why every effort to eradicate swearing throughout history, such as George Washington in 1776 or Putin in 2014, has failed. The idea of banning words that are actually neurologically tied to emotion is just as impossible as banning the emotions themselves. And that, well, that's just fucking stupid. Do you ever get the feeling that all music today is starting to sound the same? It got me thinking, scientifically, how many songs could we possibly make? And could we ever run out of music? The answer's next week on The Science of Everything.